Hi everybody. Out uh, here on a Sunday morning ride, uh, decided it was time I took in a little bit of uh, motorway work. I've just been on the motorway briefly up to now, but I uh, just want to start really sort of touching base with everything on the um, uh, Institute of Advanced Motorists uh, agenda. So yeah, haven't had any sort of face-to-face uh, -face contact with the group yet, but been looking at the logbook. I'm just trying to get prepared really, so um, just felt it was today just worth maybe putting 30 minutes in on a motorway. So uh, quite breezy conditions today, Storm Dillon is hitting the, uh, the UK, massive winds are up to 45 miles an hour, could knock our bins over. So I uh, just need to be on the, um, the lookout for uh, side winds and uh, particular, I guess, reference to uh, if there are any uh, HGVs, any big lorries on the road, any sort of gusts coming off the back of those. So where you catch me now is in part of the, uh, for those of you who aren't familiar with the UK, uh, over the, uh, the last five or ten years the, uh, the government has spent a huge amount on these uh, so-called smart motorways. Uh, the bane of my life, I must be honest, and uh, you'll see beyond this next uh, concrete bridge uh, is a gantry. Uh, these gantries are literally almost every 400 yards up the motorways throughout the United Kingdom. Goodness knows what each one costs. Some of them, not all of them, are equipped with speed cameras. And the idea is that the, uh, using smart motorways is that uh, the highways authority are then able to manage the flow of traffic. Now, personally, I see the, the benefit of these in major cities like Birmingham, around the M25 and so forth. But literally to put them across the whole country, for me, number one is a huge waste of money. And number two uh, is... Um, is actually misleading because a lot of the time the signs are wrong. They, uh, there's been recent uh, a, a certain amount of publicity recently about the uh, the huge levels of revenue that these things are generating with their speed cameras. So of course the cynical amongst us, and I must be honest, I would be included in that, would suggest that uh, this is nothing more than a money-making scheme for the government, just yet another way to tax the motorist. So it's not necessarily about whether you're riding safely, it's all about are you one mile an hour under the speed limit. And as well as that, what you'll find is in certain sections of the M25 say, over a five mile, five minute ride, literally the speed can change five or six times. So what you're doing is you're constantly spending your time looking up, looking down, looking up, looking down, checking your speed all the time. Now I know we have a responsibility to check our speed, I understand that. Okay, so I've just passed an end of speed limit sign, so I can now do the motorway speed limit here, which is 70 miles an hour. I haven't got a problem with that. But constantly now, the behaviour of the British motorway driver is one of constantly looking up to see what the speed limit is, and looking down to see what your speed is. Uh, with, I think, uh, unnecessary distraction away from reading the road environment ar ar around you. So, uh, for me, I just think they're a huge waste of money and a cynical ploy to uh, to raise, uh, to raise money uh, on behalf of the government. Rant over. Anyway, back to the motorway riding. Whoa! That's him on me there, didn't he? So what I'm just going to try and work on this morning, this very simply, is just maintaining a safe bubble around me. Getting into the inside lane where it's safe to do so. And where I'm not going to have to move, move out straight away again. And really working the mirrors really. I guess motorways are the bane of the motorcyclist's life because you've got no lovely sweeping corners to go around. But I guess the other side of it is they take us to where we want to go. I bought a couple of maps over the weekend, one of uh, Scotland, one of the Midlands in the UK. I'm going to start some long-term planning really and thinking about thinking about some of the longer rides I want to get into when I'm safe to do so. So at the moment you know, you're probably aware of my strategy is to limit myself really to uh, I'm now on a sort of a maximum of two hours really. Um, and I find that after two hours my, uh, my concentration is fried, so, because I'm still having to take in an awful lot of information. I 
and that's about the limit of my learning at the moment so uh, yeah so anyway today's going to probably be an hour and a half or so I'm a very experienced uh, car driver for the last um, 20 or 30 years I've probably averaged around 20,000 a year up and down the motorways um, by the grace of God I've got a clean license as well so I suppose I consider myself a reasonably competent driver but of course it's a different challenge isn't it when you're on two wheels but uh, must be some benefit I think in actually having uh, built up some road sense in the um, in the car the uh, eagle eyed amongst you might have noticed uh, this thing down here it's the uh, the wrist control for my drift ghost s which is uh, so far in the first eight weeks of ownership been uh, sitting on my right wrist but what I found was was in order to switch it on and switch it off I was having to reach across myself which I didn't really want to do so I'm just experimenting today with actually sticking it here and uh, this means I can control it that much better really without any uh, distraction I don't know whether any of you have got any tips on this but uh, I've noticed uh, the last couple of rides actually while the, uh, we're in sort of uh, winter conditions on the, um, the British roads is the, the fact that the mirrors seem to get uh, quite gummy so what do those of you do when you're actually out riding I know you, obviously when you stopped you can give them a polish and get some say lens cleaning fluid on them or something like that but do you just wipe them with your hands what do you do do you keep a little cloth in your pocket just be curious about what you've done with that so again I'd be grateful for any feedback from you experienced riders what do you do on motorways I've read the stuff in the uh, IAM handbook I've taken a look at the, uh, the police riders manual I've got my own experience from the car but what are your sort of uh, tips over and above that that uh, you, uh, you normally use when you're on a motorway just drop uh, a line to me in the comments uh, field let's, uh, let's have a debate about that and feel free to talk to each other as well Okay, so the, I think the first HGV I've overtaken this morning. No noticeable impact from any side wind there. Over the weekend when it was uh, hit had snowed, so I was just again playing around with the bike, just trying to get the feel of the MFD multifunction display. And uh, looked at the average fuel, and I'm average, averaging about 56 at the moment, which uh, I'd be very pleased with. I don't uh, ride fast, open the throttle occasionally just to see what it can do, if it's safe, but uh, generally speaking I'm, uh, I'm just pootling along actually, just enjoying myself. So I think we'll end our motorway lesson here, nice quiet intro for me today, New Year's Eve, roads are quiet, and I'll take that. Just a little bit of chance to practice my mirrors, uh, keeping that safe sort of bubble around me. The IAM talk about uh, the uh, the tug concept, take, use, and give information. And again, I've memorised the you know, the information position, speed, gear, and acceleration acronym as well. So. Just trying to sort of lay a bit of a foundation. So here we are, we're going to exit the motorway. Check the mirrors. And off we come. discovered this road a few weeks ago you might remember it when we, um, we found the, uh, the couple of uh, riders who's uh, one of whom who's uh, shafted uh, broken on his uh, GS so I hope those guys got home safely but this is just a nice little Leicestershire back road 
and perfect conditions to ride in today really there's a little bit of a, a dampness on the road so nothing the bike can't cope with so having done some motorway I just want to practice my uh, my cornering again practice my positioning Interesting now that on this back road, I'm uh, obviously doing uh, 50 miles an hour versus the, uh, the 70 I was doing on the motorway, but I can actually now feel the crosswind more strongly, so I think that probably is just a function of how well the, um, the screen works actually at higher speeds on these big BMs. Little tip I picked up watching Advanced Rider on, the, on YouTube. Really interesting channel, recommended, uh, was that uh, I was when I was getting in my position one or position three I was actually leaving it too soon really so for example here I should be in position three and what he was saying was was that um, you should stay out there until that view becomes open So here's my bugbear, can you see the, uh, the high-vis van at the front there? The law is really an ass in the UK concerning this. So what's this? Dino plumbing. Red and yellow on the back. Spoke to a policeman the other day, asked him to clarify this red and yellow business on the back. Because I've got quite a bit of um, fierce debate, I've got to say about uh, attaching the, uh, the yellow strips to the back of my top box and the back of my panniers. Some people telling me this, is, uh, this breaks the law. Well, dino plumbing obviously aren't aware of that. And I've got to say, over the last two weeks, I've seen all kinds of people from surveyors to building contractors with red and yellow on the back. Uh, and to me, it's an eminently sensible thing to do if you find that your machine is being parked on a roadside or in harm's way. Now, if the law works for them, on the back of a massive great van why is it then it's illegal apparently for a motorcyclist who's far more vulnerable and has a much smaller surface area at the rear to actually do the same thing answers on a postcard so I know the law I understand that but the common sense argument so looking ahead now, I can see yellow high vis, and I'm assuming that's a couple of cyclists. And again, a lot of people have given me quite a bit of stick, actually, about um, you shouldn't wear high vis because it doesn't make any difference. Well, I've got to say, in these circumstances, it does. And I've got 40 years' experience on the roads. I mean, look at that cyclist. You've got a cyclist in blue there. You've got one with orange on. Who's the one who stands out? What's the common sense argument? I think there are, you're going to need to discover in this world of motorcycling, there are an awful lot of opinions out there. You've got to think for yourself and do what you think is right, which is what I will always do. So for me, I will stick with my yellow high vis on the back of my top box, on the back of my panniers. I've also attached some red by the way, just to even things up a little bit. And red obviously is useful at night, I don't know how much useful it is during the day, not very useful during the day and to be honest uh, I'm not really going to be a night rider, I might take it out occasionally, but generally speaking my uh, riding is going to be during the day. And I'll make no apologies for the yellow on the back of the bike. And for me, for two pounds, it makes me safer. I feel safe in knowing I can be seen from the back, and I know that I can be seen better from the back. 
And the only situation where yellow isn't going to work particularly well is if you are against a very bright background. But if a light is behind you, you're always going to be seen better. And on a day like today, typical English conditions, I know that I stand out far better. I wear a high-vis vest as well. So why is it police and emergency services should be limited to that? Or as the policeman quoted me the other day, quote, public services. To me that makes no sense at all. And I get the impression as well, again reading a number of blogs, is that a lot of policemen take a common sense approach anyway. Turn a blind eye to it very sensibly. So again, we've got a cyclist in front of us here whose red flashing light stands out a mile. But in blue, can barely be seen apart from that. Anyway, rant over. Let me know what you think in the comments. Let's throw a bit more petrol on the fire, shall we? Okay, so there you go. So my thoughts on five years again. My thoughts on smart motorways. Hope you've enjoyed that. See you again. Thanks for watching. And I'll see you next time. Back to the bike signing off.